welcome to your teen church message for today. Let us get started with a prayer. Father God, Lord, I just thank you so much for this time when we can come and just listen to your message, Lord. Lord, I pray that this is a blessed message and that it speaks to, directly to us and to our hearts, Lord. Lord, I pray that you are with each and every single person who is watching this and that, the, that your presence is felt amongst them. I pray this all in your precious Son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, have you ever had someone pray for you? And while they were praying for you, you could sort of feel how God was working through them in their prayer. Maybe someone has prayed for you while you've been extremely anxious or worried about something. And while they were praying or after they prayed, you could just feel a sense of calm come on you. Have you ever prayed for someone? Sometimes I think we feel like someone needs to be qualified in order to pray for someone, but that isn't the case. When we pray for someone, it is actually an intercessory prayer, which means that we are praying on the behalf of someone, something that we should, as Christians should actually be practicing and doing daily. So today's Bible reading comes from Ephesians 3, verses 4 to 21. So it's chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And it reads, a prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and how High and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be full to the measure of all fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So, our Bible reading is actually a, ret a letter, excuse me. Our Bible reading is actually a letter that was written to the church in Ephesus by Paul. Do you guys remember who Paul is in the New Testament? For those of you who don't, Paul's original name is Saul of Tarsus, and Saul was actually a Jewish zealot who would go out and persecute and kill Christians or anyone who was affiliated or knew or was a part of the Christian church. This was until he was actually on a road from Jerusalem to Damascus, as, and on that road he had an encounter with Jesus. And this encounter with Jesus changed his life so much so that after, after this encounter he was baptized and he began to preach about Jesus, and he would even argue with other religions about Jesus and how Jesus was the true Son of God. And this encounter actually happened many, many, many years after Jesus went back up into heaven. Most of Paul, a lot of the New Testament is actually made up of Paul's letters. But in this specific letter that we have just read a part of, it's quite a long letter, so you guys should go read it in, in Ephesians. He tells the church of Ephesus what he is praying for them, what he's praying for them to God. He prays for four things. The first thing is inner strength. The um, second one is for Jesus to live in their heart. The third one is for them to understand how deep and how wide Jesus' love is for them. And the fourth thing that he prays for them is for them to know that this love that Jesus has for them passes all their understanding. In Paul's prayer, we can see that he desperately wants them to know how much Jesus loves them and that they are filled with the love of God. Paul then tells them just how great God is and that there's nothing impossible for God to do. We read in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21, it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. But take note of this first line there. To him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power at work within us. So what this is saying is that God can do so much more than what we could ever think or ask God to do. It's more that we could ever think or imagine what God can do. And it, is at, and it is according to his power at work within us. So what does this mean? It means that God is working within you. He can use you to do great things. 
if you let him. But if you do not let God work in you much, then he can only use you for small things and to do little things. You see, it is through God working through us that we should be constantly intercessing for other people, which means that we should constantly be praying for other people. Also, isn't it kind of nice to know when someone else is thinking of you? Now, imagine knowing that someone else is always praying for you, praying on your behalf. Now, there's a saying that caught my attention quite a while back that said, some of us are only around now because of the prayers of our grandparents. And I think that is actually quite special. And even now, you as a young person, you can also start praying for your children and your children's children. You can also start praying for your spouse, the one that you haven't met yet, or maybe you have met them. Your prayers could actually be the changing point in someone's life. There's a little bit of an example I can give you. For many, many years, I prayed for my brother and for him to come and know God. And for a long while, it didn't seem like that was going to happen until... You know, one day he came and he was like, yeah, you know, he started reading his Bible. He started speaking to God and praying to God more. And that, that was a prayer answered. My mom and I rejoiced. We were like, thank you, Lord. Like our prayers are being answered. You are listening. But that didn't just happen overnight. That was years and years and years of praying for that. So is there someone around you or someone who you know who is really struggling? Pray for them. Your prayers can be what helps, get they, what helps, uh, what helps them out could be what helps answer their, answer their prayer, for God to answer their prayers. And also remember that God is able to do more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. God is always working within us. God is always around us working. Sometimes we need to pray and let God work through us in order for those prayers to be answered. Let us pray. Lord God, I just thank you so much that you are a good God and that you work through us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you can use us in amazing things in this week, Lord. Lord, I pray that you can just deepen our faith and that we can also come to realize how much you love us, how deep and how wide your love is for us, Lord. Lord, I pray for all of us who are writing exams. I pray that you give us a, a, a sense of calm, Lord, a sense of peace and help us to learn and study really hard, Lord. Lord, I pray that you, you work through us and that you continue to use us, Lord, and keep us safe. I pray this all in your precious Son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen, guys. I hope you guys have an awesome week and see you guys next week. Bye.